it's good to see a good number connected in, and we trust that the result will be God's blessing upon you as you hear the message of the gospel once again. Now, if you have a Bible, I would like to turn to the Gospel of John, John chapter 3, and we're going to read some very well-known verses. Uh, I want to read verse 3, John chapter 3 and verse 3. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Turn further down to verse 14, John 3, verse 14. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. And we know that God will bless his own word that we have read together. John 3.16 certainly, uh, I would reckon, would be one of the best known verses that we find in our Bibles. And it is a verse that has been used pretty often in the presenting of the message of the gospel. And I would like to just use John 3.16 again as we look again at the good news of salvation from God. And it has been presented in very uh, many ways. But this evening, I would just simply like to look at it uh, under four very simple headings. I would like us to think, first of all, about a message from God, and it's a message for everyone, a message from everyone. But then I would like us to think of the fact that it is a message with regards to the only one. And the person of the Lord Jesus Christ is central to the message of the gospel. But then... The Lord Jesus Christ, he said to Nicodemus, ye must be born again. And he gave the reason why. Very simply, no one will ever enter into the kingdom of God unless they have a new birth. But then I also want to think about the wonderful, wonderful news that the message of the gospel, yes, it's for everyone. But how good it would be if that message were for someone in the webinar this evening. That is a great uh, potential uh, as the gospel is presented, that you that are listening understand your need of salvation and understand the fact that there is a, a savior for you and how wonderful it would be as a result of hearing the gospel presented from John 3, 16 again, that you would come to know Christ as your only and your personal Savior, the greatest message that ever has been given to mankind, a message to everyone. Who does this message come from? Ah, oh, dear friend, how good it is to remind ourselves again this evening that this is a message from God, a message from God. It never ceases, ceases to marvel me. The fact that God would even want to communicate with us. Why would God take an interest? And you and me. And yet, as we read our Bible, we are confronted with the reality that there is a God in heaven, and that God has a very definite interest in you and me. That God not only has an interest, but that interest is for our good. And well, may we quote again the start of verse 16 For God so loved the world. How good it is to remember that there is a God in heaven, and He loves you. And he loves me. He has a very definite interest in every single individual. And dear friend, what is God's greatest interest for you and I? We can think of the goodness of God to us. We can look back over the years of our life, be they short or be they long. And we can look at the way that God has been good to every single one of us in spite of the difficulties. In spite of the problems that you and I might have to 
confront in our life. And yet we have to acknowledge that God is good. God is good to us as far as this life is concerned. But when we look into the word of God, we find, dear friend, that God is good as far as eternity is concerned. God, our Savior, who will have all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. How good it is to remember again that that God who is in heaven, he desires that you and I be in heaven with him. When all of our life is over down here, the one thing that God would desire for you and me is that you and I be found in heaven. Why should God take such an interest in, in us? He has sent a message and he has sent a message to everyone that takes you and, and me in. But dear friend, not only has he sent a message to everyone, but that message, it is the same message for everyone. We live in days when, if we, if we think about marketing strategies, there's a message depending on every target audience, be it demographics, be it race, be it economic uh, level, be it whatever aspect that you and I might want to divide society in. There are so many different messages, and quite often we will find messages coming from the same source, but they're different depending on the audience. Dear friend, God only has one message. No matter where you and I may go, no matter what our background may be, God has one message for you and I. Only one message. And what is that message? Dear friend, that message not only is a message for everyone, but that message is concerning the only one. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And the message of the gospel is centered in a person, the person of our Lord Jesus Christ. And why Christ? Dear friend, because you and I need Christ. And why do you and I need Christ? We have only to go back to the early part of the chapter and the verses that we have read. The Lord Jesus Christ was speaking to a man called Nicodemus. And that man came to see Jesus one night. He had felt the need in his soul to meet that blessed one. And as the Lord and Nicodemus conversed that night, as they talked together, the Lord Jesus Christ made a statement to Nicodemus that was true for him. It is true for me. It is true for you. You must be born again. What did Nicodemus hear? The Lord said, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. What the Lord was saying to Nicodemus was a very simple language was simply this. Nicodemus, unless you have a new beginning, unless you have a new start, unless you have that moment when you get divine life from God, Nicodemus, unless you have a moment of salvation, you will never ever be in heaven. We'd be good to just pause this evening for a minute. And each one of us ask ourselves, have I got what Christ spoke about? Because if I am going to be in heaven, I need it. And dear friend, let me ask you something else. If you don't have it, you're not ready for heaven. And dear friend, if it isn't heaven, tell me, where will it be? You and I, we know we're not here to stay. I know we have. We don't know. But we are creatures bound for what the Bible calls eternity. And the day will come when you and I will have to say goodbye to all that we know and all whom we know here. And we'll go into the other side. And dear friend, how good it is to be ready. 
how good it is to remind us that that is why God has a message for everyone. God would have you and I to be saved, for God would have you and I to be in heaven. Nicodemus learned the lesson that night. I must be born again. What does being born again mean? Dear friend, let me just put it to you like this. The day that I was born, that was a very, very definite moment in my life. Obviously, I don't remember it. I've been told about it. I know the date. If I had have listened carefully enough, I would remember maybe the time of the day that it happened. A very definite moment in life when I was born. Everyone who is on their way to heaven, everyone who is saved, has been born again has a very definite moment in life. They can go back to a day and a very definite moment in their experience when they started for heaven, when they trusted in Christ, coming to understand that as a sinner, I need a savior. And that savior is Christ, the only one. And by putting your trust in him, you're saved and on your way to heaven. Let me ask you again, do you have that moment? The Lord Jesus Christ said to Nicodemus, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. And so the gospel, it is good news. It is a message for everyone, but it is a message that reminds us that no one will ever get to heaven without salvation. But we have already mentioned that the gospel is a message concerning the only one and why Christ. We have read for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Why did God give his only begotten son? Dear friend, God gave him to be our savior. The Bible says that father sent the son to be the savior of the world. And sometimes we sing down from the glory, the savior came down to this world of the cross of shame, gazing in wonder, I there exclaim, Jesus died for me. If there is one thing that from a historical standpoint, people will always associate with Christ is the fact that he died upon a cross. And well, may we remember that fact. Why did he die? The Lord Jesus Christ, he told Nicodemus the reason why. He made Nicodemus remember and experience a historical fact of his own nation. And he says, as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. He was speaking about himself. He was speaking about his death that was going to occur at the cross of Calvary. He was speaking as to the reason why he had to die. It was to provide salvation for all mankind that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have eternal life. And so the message of the gospel, it is concerning the only one, the one who came from heaven, but the one that went to the cross and the one who died upon the cross. And why did he die? That you and I might not perish, but that you and I might have eternal life. What happened upon the cross of Calvary? This is why the message of the gospel is concerning the only one. Because only one could provide salvation for you and I. There upon the cross of Calvary, the Bible says Christ died for our sin. Peter says he was offered for us. Why? The just for the unjust that he might bring us to God. 
And upon the cross of Calvary, Paul writing to Timothy, he could say, there is one God and one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself a ransom for all. And upon the cross of Calvary, that one, he was sinless, that one upon whom the punishment of sin should never have fallen upon him. In him there was no sin. And yet the Bible would tell us that he was made sin for us. What does that mean, dear friend? It simply means this, that as I look out by faith to the cross of Calvary, and as I see one dying upon that cross, I come to the understanding he is there instead of me. I, the guilty sinner, I deserve the punishment that my sins are due. But he died for me. He was willing to take my place. He was willing to bear my sin in his own body on the tree. And by taking my place, he has provided salvation for me. But not for me only. Because this is an offer that God makes. And he makes it to all. Yes, a message for everyone. It is a message concerning the only one. And can I just reiterate the fact again this evening. Dear friend, if you and I are ever going to be in heaven. You and I need Christ. You and I need a savior. Why? Because you and I need a new beginning. You and I, on account of our sin, we need salvation. But dear friend, that blessed one who died upon the cross of Calvary, he completed the work demanded by God in order to provide salvation for you and I. And so the Lord said to Nicodemus, ye must be born again. But God, dear friend, in his message to you and I, doesn't tell us of our need without providing the remedy or the answer for that need. God has already provided that provision. God has provided the remedy for your need and mine. And that remedy is found in Christ. How can you and I be saved? Well, dear friend, it is a message. That is not only from God to everyone. It's a message that is not only concerning the only one. But I am glad to be able to tell you that it is a message for anyone. What does that mean? Listen to what the verse says. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. What for? To die for you and me and provide salvation for us. What does God say? That whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. What is God telling us in this latter part of the verse? God is offering you and I salvation. How good it is to know that it's a genuine offer. You know, there are many offers. And sometimes you wonder, are they genuine? What's behind it? Can I really trust this offer? Dear friend, God, reverently speaking this evening, he is offering you salvation, and it's a genuine offer. God will never offer a man, a woman, boy or girl salvation without being willing to save you. And how good it is to come this evening and present to you a message of salvation with the utter confidence that God, he not only is offering you salvation, but he is willing to save you this very evening. It is an offer for anyone. And that takes you in this evening, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. If we were to go over to the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 16, there we find a man, 
And he asks the question, what must I do to be saved? They said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. But whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. How can you and I be saved? Dear friend, remember, it has nothing to do with you. It has all to do with him. It is faith placed alone on Christ, the Savior who has died for you and I. I wonder, dear friend, do you have that moment, that very definite moment in your life when by faith you put your trust in him and depended upon him and what he has done for you upon the cross of Calvary to provide salvation for us. When can you be saved? You see, this is a message that's not only for everyone. It's a message concerning the only one. It's a message, yes, for anyone. And that takes you in. What a Sunday evening this would be. If you could look back to the night of your salvation, can that be possible? Yes, it can be, dear friend, because I am one of the ones who believe that in the preaching of the gospel, God has a message for the individual. And dear friend, if you are listening tonight to the message of the gospel again, Maybe you have heard it many times. Maybe you listened to it last Sunday evening. Maybe you can't remember the times that you have heard the message from God. Maybe you have lost count of the times that God has offered you salvation. Let me tell you, dear friend, there is the blessed possibility that that offer could be made yours tonight. Why? Because this is a message. And God is speaking to you again. What a, what a blessing it would be if the message this evening would be for someone, some individual. I wonder, will that be you? I wonder, is there anyone listening this evening and you have come to understand? I'm not right with God. My sins will keep me out of heaven. But there is a Savior who died for me upon the cross of Calvary. And if you would put your faith, if you would put your trust in him and simply believe in him for the salvation of your soul, what does the Bible say? What does the message say? It says that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And I come back to what I mentioned a few minutes ago, that's a genuine offer that God is making. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Tell me as I conclude my simple message this evening, do you have eternal life? Are you saved? Can you go back to that very definite moment in your life when coming as a sinner, acknowledging your need before God, you trusted in Christ and in Christ alone for the salvation of your soul? If you haven't, what about this evening? Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. 